everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joni Young. If you're new here, thanks so much for joining. So here we've got an 11 by 14 primed canvas. I'm gonna work on the background. I wanna build up some clouds. And lately, this this month has been really like all about skies. Uh, so hopefully you guys are learning a lot. I'm gonna take some titanium white and some light blue violet. And I want this sky to have a little bit more shadow in it. So it's going to be a little bit darker than my usual sky. So I'm going to come in here and just start laying in where I want the color and the shadow to be. Pick up a little bit more of my blue now. And you can see I'm just random, very randomly tapping, kind of wiggling. You can apply the paint however you want for this. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's just about placement of color. And take a little bit more. So each time I'm picking up more of the blue violet and less of the white. That way we've got a variation of light and dark. Now what I want to do is add um, complementary color to this. So I'm going to be making my light fuzzy peach color. If you have orange, neon orange, peach already, you just go ahead and use that. I just kind of have fun making my own colors. It's part of the creative process for me. And I like to bring my paintings around all the sides of the canvas. I don't frame any of my paintings. I like the way they look. Just plain old canvas on the wall and the painting that goes around from every side and angle. So no matter what part of the room you're looking at it from, you can see a bit of that painting. It just carries around and I like that. Okay, so I think I've got enough of that blue in there. I'm just gonna set this in the water. Switch over to, I'll use one of my filbert brushes. This is a uh, number 12, I believe. There's a lot of paint covering it up, but it's not the biggest one. I know my biggest one is a 16, so this is probably 12, 14. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my titanium white, pull in yellow, pull in neon red. Carefully mix the two. Now if you have too much of either color, you'll need to balance that out. So you want it to be peach. And I think I've got a nice color there. I'm gonna use this. I know it's gonna dry a bit darker, which is fine, because that'll enable me to put a nice bright highlight over top and still have um, a darker shade of this one. Um, and the blue paint is still wet. I want a little bit of this orange to pick up some of that blue. That way we'll get um, uh, more of an earth tone, uh, brownish color, which is also nice. And you see that a lot in those very old, old paintings. So, and I don't know if they just get that way from over time. They get a little bit of sepia look to them. So I'm gonna come in here and some parts of my brush have a little bit more of the yellow in them. So we'll see how that kind of dries. Depending on that, I might have to go back and balance that out and just kind of tint it with a little bit of my neon red. I don't want to get into any of the blue just yet. I want to make sure I have a nice clean peach color first. That looked just a little bit too yellow. 
as well right in there so I just pick up a little bit more of my neon red when that happens. As you can see I just have a little bit of it right on the end of my brush. And I'm going to come right up here. See, I'm going to pick up some of that blue now and soften and you'll see that color that starts to evolve on here. So it can be uh, really beneficial to work wet on wet for this reason because then you're just getting these natural colors forming without having to wait for it to dry and then making, trying to make that color and coming back and adding it. This way you get a color on it all on its own. And that's part of the fun too when you're creating, isn't it? Kind of just seeing what colors you can make and what will happen. Some people are scared by taking chances with their art. I, I love it just because I, for many years, I planned out my paintings so much, I guess. With me, I like to add some surprise and excitement. So we're getting sort of this sepia color happening. And depending on how much red that I've got on my brush, like I've, I just picked up a little bit more red this time, and I'll just show you what'll happen if I layer over part of the darkest blue area. And we'll just see how that kind of dries. Now I really do like a light pink so I'm going to here I'll show you, I'll show you my my palette here titanium white with that neon red and you'll get a really gorgeous almost coral color pinky coral and so I'm going to add add some puffy clouds in here now time to start building up these clouds and overlapping and because we've got some dark shades in here it's going to really make these clouds all the highlights and peaks on them stand out so it'll be lighter and softer wherever you have the lighter tones. Again, wherever I have it a little bit darker here. And I'm just taking, see I like to use a filbert brush for the peaks on my clouds because it's already that round kind of half circle shape. May as well use a brush that's going to help make your painting process easier, right? And same if you wanted to paint a moon. Right? You could just say I wanted a moon right there. You just use the brush to help give you that, that shape. I don't know if I want a moon, so I'm just going to blend that out and make those into clouds. a little twist and then see how the paint isn't on the tip of my brush anymore you want to make sure I'm just going to clean this off a little bit you don't want all that paint going inside right here and just settling there because you're not using it number one two it's going to wreck your brush and it's going to be hard to wash out and it's kind of a waste of paint and it 
needs to be right here on the tip. So I'm just gonna slide into this pink. And I'm not even gonna blend it this time. I'm just gonna see what happens here. See how you can just layer. Take a little bit more white now. It almost looks like sun rays here, doesn't it? I should play on that. This isn't the typically the brush I would use for sun rays because it's rounded. I would use a flat. But I break my own rules sometimes. I'll get a little bit of hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing with my brush and how I'm picking up water and then wiping off the excess, picking up a little bit of paint. So it's really transparent and easy to flow out of my brush. And I can come back to that later as that dries and possibly add some more. And here I'm just kind of tap, like, tapping and wiggling. I think right in here I want to add a little bit more blue. And it's mixed with that watered down white. So if it starts to look a little bit green, we'll kind of just keep an eye on that. It may work in this painting, it might not, and in that case if it doesn't, and I really don't like the way it looks, then I can just uh, change the hue of it, the tone of it, however you want to put it or call it, with some pink. Just right in here. I'm going to do just that. Add a little bit of neon red, a bit of white in here. Okay, that's it for today's painting. I hope you guys learned a lot of tips and tricks to help make painting your skies much easier. Um, there will be a second part to this video that I'll be adding to my channel next week when I add a landscape up in the sky, so it'll be a surprise. It will also be a time lapse and not so much of a step-by-step -step tutorial, so just a heads up, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Join Patreon. Um, help donate anything that you can to help me keep going um, as a YouTube artist. And give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you found it helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye.